and sisters, my elders, this is Cape Coast Dungeons, or some people prefer to call it Cape Coast Castle. Um, this place dates back to the 17th century. It was built around 1665 by the English. So when we say the English, though, we can say they brought in masons, carpenters, artisans, and engineers. But talking about the labor used in constructing this building, they used Africans. It took the English and the local people more than a hundred years of rebuilding, demolition and addition before they came out with something like this. This structure is more than 350 years now. This is the third one the Europeans constructed along the coast of Ghana. So we have two other castles, one by name Alamina Castle, built by Portugal around 1482. That one is almost 200 years older than Cape Coast Castle. We have the other one in Accra by name Christian Spock Castle, that was Denmark, 1661. So again, um, it is estimated that the coast of West Africa had about 50 European fort and castles. And out of that 50, Ghana had more than 40 of them. So this country, Ghana, had more than 90% of all the fort and castles West Africa had. So you will wonder why Ghana had that much. Ghana had that much not as a result of the gospel. Ghana had that much because of gold and the enslavement of our people. So the Europeans came to West Africa with two motives. First, they heard that there was so much gold south of the Sahara. And through Mansa Musa, they got to know that we had gold. So Mansa Musa was the emperor of the Ghana Empire. So when I talk about the Ghana Empire, I'm talking about present-day Mali. Mauritania, Niger, his empire was really vast. He had Timbuktu as the capital, where he established one of the finest libraries and universities in the world. You know, Mansa Musa was a Muslim. You know, every faithful Muslim would have to travel to Mecca once in your lifetime. It is recorded that when he traveled from West Africa, from Mali to Mecca around the 14th century, wherever he passed, he devalued the price of gold. He devalued the price of gold in Egypt for about 12 years. So let's, for example, let's say in Egypt, in Egypt then an ounce of gold was, let's say, $5,000. But when he went through, now an ounce of gold was like 10 or $20. So this is what this man did. He did same in the Middle East. So for one man to devalue the price of gold, then it means this man has a lot of it. And this news about Mansa Musa spreading gold all, gold all over spread around the world. And the Europeans got to know that, yes, there was so much gold in West Africa. They came here around the 15th century looking for that gold. And they found that gold here in this country. And with time, the fort and castles they constructed for gold served another purpose. They served as slave castles and slave forts. So I mentioned earlier on, the Europeans came here with two motives. First, to look for gold, and secondly, to enslave. To enslave because the Catholic Church had decreed to Spain and Portugal that you guys can go around and exploit the world. And in the course of your exploitations, when you find new lands, you can do as you wish with those people, if they are not Christians, or if they are not baptized. And you know, talk about West Africa. West Africa was not a Christian nation. So the motive was to enslave. So that was the reason behind the fort and castles. Let me draw your attention to this right here. So we have the male dungeons, my elders, and right above the male dungeons, we have the Church of England, or the Anglican Church. So it happened that Jesus was worshiped right there. Our ancestors also died and mourned right underneath the church. And it isn't a coincidence that a church was built on a dungeon, no. It was intentional. The same thing happened at Elmina Castle. The Dutch built their church, the Dutch reformed church was right above the female dungeon. So this is to say, the church played a vital role in the enslavement of our people. The whole thing about the transatlantic slave trade was orchestrated, or it was invented by the church. And when I say the church, I'm talking about the Catholic church, the Anglican church, the Dutch reformed church, the Presbyterian church, you name them. Because they came out with propaganda malicious and fraudulent one, you know, trying to justify that, you know, Africans had no souls to be saved. 
and trying to justify maliciously affronting it that, you know, there are some characters in the Bible that were cursed. That's Cain, Shem, and Hem. They're trying to say, okay, Africans are now the descendants of these characters. So, you know, we are bound to be the white man's slave. But, you know, this was greed from the church, greed and selfishness. So that made them to entice people to do evil. Because at the end of the day, the evil you did benefit, benefited the church immensely. So the church got rich from the enslavement, the toil, the struggle, and the death of our ancestors. So this is what I want to draw attention, your attention to. And also, let's go to the south, southern part of Africa. We can talk about apartheid. You, know, you also know the apartheid thing was also orchestrated by the Dutch Reformed Church. Actually, the church has been a thorn in our flesh over the centuries. Yes. Any questions or comments, ladies and gentlemen?